All right, we're going to do some calculations with the tangential and normal components of acceleration, some examples. So for this example, we have R of T equals T squared I plus 2TJ. And we want to find our unit tangent vector, our principal unit normal, our tangential component of acceleration, and our normal component of acceleration at t equals 1. So let's find our unit tangent vector. So our prime is 2ti plus 2j. The length of our prime is going to be the square root of 4t squared plus 4 and at t equals 1 our prime of 1 gives us 2i plus 2j and the length of our prime at 1 is going to be 2 square root 2 So our unit tangent vector is our prime over the length of our prime and we just end up with square root of 2 over 2 i plus the square root of 2 over 2 j. Now to calculate our, for the calculate the tangential component of acceleration. We need, we need our double prime. Let's calculate our double prime. Our double prime, when we take the derivative here, we just get 2i. Two, two and a sub t, our tangential component of acceleration, is just going to be our prime, and we're looking at t equals 1. Our prime dot our double prime over the length of our prime so we get 2 i plus 2 j taking the dot product with 2 i and we're dividing that all by 2 square root 2, the length of our prime. And when I calculate this out, I just end up with the square root of 2. So my tangential component of acceleration at t equals 1 is square root of 2. Let's calculate our normal component of acceleration. We'll use the, the cross product um, expression that we came up with. So a sub n is going to be v cross a magnitude of that divided by the length of v. So in terms of what we've done here, we get r prime of 1 and we're interested at time equals 1. r prime of 1 cross r double prime at 1 magnitude of that divided by the magnitude of r prime at 1. So let's calculate our cross product. r prime at 1 cross r double prime at 1. No, it's fine. There we go. Um, so we're calculating r prime at 1 cross r double prime at 1. So we'll use our determinant form ijk 2, 2, 0 and 2, 0, 0. And when we calculate this out, we get negative 4 k. And the magnitude 
the magnitude of our our prime cross our double prime at one. This comes out to be four. So our normal component of acceleration is four over two square root two, and I just end up with square root two. And our normal unit, normal vector, I'm going to use the formula that I said would probably uh, probably be easier to calculate with. We're going to use the acceleration minus a sub t times the unit tangent vector at 1, all divided by a sub n. We have all these pieces. So when I plug that in, I get 2i minus square root of 2 times square root of 2 over 2i plus square root of 2 over 2j all divided by square root of 2. And when I simplify that, I get square root of 2 over 2i minus square root of 2 over 2j. And I think this calculation is much easier than using our definition of the unit normal vector as t prime over the length of t prime. That would be a little more difficult to calculate, I think, than, than these pieces. Let's look at an example in three dimensions. So, so you can see that the calculations, they take a little work. They can, be, they, they can involve a fair amount of algebra. Um, we add one more dimension, and that's going to, that's going to add to our, our complexity here a little bit. So let's look at another example in three dimensions. So our, our function, our vector valued function, r of t is going to be e to the t sine t. I plus e to the t cosine t j plus e to the t k. And we, we're we interested at t equals zero. We want to find our unit tangent vector our principal unit normal vector. Our tangential component of acceleration and our normal component of acceleration. So let's find our, our unit tangent vector. So our prime is going to be e to the t cosine t plus e to the t sine t i plus e to the t cosine t minus e to the t sine t j plus e to the t k. And we'll go ahead and calculate, uh, since we, ha we started our derivative, let's calculate our double prime, just so we have it. Our double prime, when we calculate that out, and simplify, because we're going to have a lot of terms here. When we calculate that out and simplify, we get 2e to the t cosine t i minus 2e to the t sine tj plus e to the tk. Our prime at 0, we're interested in time equals 0. So our prime at 0 equals i plus j plus k. Our 
the length of our prime at zero is the square root of three. So our unit tangent vector at time equals zero is going to be square root of three over three times I, J, I plus J plus K. The tangential component of acceleration is going to be our prime at zero, dot product with our double prime at zero, over the magnitude of our prime at zero. So this is going to be I plus J plus K dot our double prime at zero gives us 2i plus k divided by square root of 3. And when I perform my dot product and simplify, I get that a sub t, the tangential component of acceleration, is square root of 3. I'm going to use a different, a different formula for a sub n. This is another one that we talked about that uh, often is easier to calculate with. I'm going to use the formula that a sub n is the magnitude of the acceleration squared minus the tangential component of acceleration squared. And we're interested in a sub n at zero. So the acceleration, the magnitude of the acceleration squared at zero is five. And the magnitude of the tangential component squared is three. So my normal component of acceleration is just square root of 2. And finally, I'm going to use the same formula that we did previously for our principal unit normal vector. So n at 0 is going to be the acceleration at time 0 minus the tangential component of acceleration times the unit tangent vector at zero all over a sub n. So when I substitute in I get 2i plus k minus the square root of 3 times square root of 3 over 3 times i j k, i plus j plus k. And all of that divided by square root of 2. And when I simplify this, I finally get that my principal unit normal vector at time equals 0 is square root of 2 over 2 times i minus j. After I simplify, simplify all of this. So again, this, the formula, this formula for the normal component of acceleration is usually going to be easier to calculate with than the definition of the, I'm sorry, not for the unit, unit normal vector. This calculation for the unit normal vector is going to be easier to calculate than, than using the definition. And this, this formula for 
the normal component of acceleration is often going to be easier to calculate with than our formula involving cross products.